Welcome to the gig. I'm Johnny O. We do all things tech. Today I want to talk about networking. I'm going to continue my networking and do the explain the final networking layer, layer three. Layer three is routing and remote access. And in my opinion, next to layer one, which you know applies to everything, layer three is the most interesting. Layer two is a little bit boring, it's just switching. Layer three is routing and remote access. What that means is when you connect to the internet from your home over cable or DSL, what will happen is you'll go over copper then to fiber. Then the fiber will hit a central switch at your ISP. Now that central switch, they call it a core switch, that is a router. There is no difference between a core switch and a router. When they say core switch, they're talking about a layer three router. The ports on the back look like ethernet ports. They're not, they're layer three ports. They can handle certain protocols that other ports cannot. Um, they're, they're physically different from switching. It looks like a switch, but it's a core switch. You can't terminate a layer three port to another, you can't terminate a layer three port to a layer two port. You must have an uplink port to terminate a layer three port to in your layer two device. For example, it is physically different. Looks exactly the same, but it's physically different. Uh, a core switch can be anywhere from uh, 24 and 48 ports up to 2,000 ports. Some of these will, could be gigantic with hundreds of ports on them. You can imagine your ISP and how many, how many nodes they have to terminate. They'll all terminate to a layer three device. Uh, Cisco makes the best layer three devices, bar none. I don't care what anyone says. <laughs> now, what happens is if you want to think of it logically, you think layer one, that's firewall, layer two switching, and then layer three is routing. So. When you configure it, you go to layer one, then you go to layer two, and you go to layer three. No, nope, that's not how it works. It's counterintuitive. Layer three always sits in front of layer one. <laughs> so if you have a network and you have a core switch, the core switch will sit in front of the firewall. I know, it doesn't make sense. But one thing that they use these core switches for isn't just ISPs. You have a big corporation, and you have secure lines that you must run between offices or offices and your, your ISP and they have to be secure, you use a core switch because you can terminate industrial or enterprise, what I call industrial, or enterprise VPNs to them. And we're not talking about your home VPN that you use for privacy at home. We're talking about industrial IPsec VPNs. IPsec is basically the foundation protocol or design for all, for all industrial VPNs. So even Microsoft Flex VPN is an IPsec VPN. Microsoft Flex is used for Azure. If you have Azure and you want to terminate it to your office, like everyone at your office is, is gonna use the servers on your Azure deployment. You must have a layer three device that terminates to the Azure system. And Azure will have a software VPN called a Microsoft Flex. It will terminate over the, IP, the Cisco IPsec protocol to your layer three device. And that's how everyone will gain access to your services on Azure. That's how it works. Uh, layer three is for remote access. Like I said, routing and remote access. So. When you're coming in to a network over a, secure, over a secure connection, you hit the router first. The router will also have a NAT service, Network Address Translator, which is a layer one service. It's simply just a firewall that says basically, this router, this is how I set them up. This router doesn't do any firewalling. So you can only connect from here to here, okay? It doesn't do any firewalling, no other connections, just this. That's what you tell the, the firewall. Okay, only this IPsec connection can connect to this. 
It's very secure when you do that because nothing else will even be able to communicate with that port. Only this VPN, only this Microsoft Flex VPN, or only this IPsec VPN can connect to this port. So all other traffic is ignored, very secure. Now, then it goes from there, then it goes and hits your, your firewall. Now it does the firewalling, right? Now you have some filtering and this sort of thing. So I put all the filtering on that IPsec. Only traffic from this VPN can come in here to this router. Then the router goes to the firewall, the firewall distributes it in the distribution layer, which is layer two, the switching layer, and that's how it works, okay? Your router controls your remote access. And if you think about it, it's like traffic like stop, go, the router comes in, it controls that. Also, there's other very secure, very secure connection types that you can use over layer three, and they're always layer three. MPLS, for example, is a layer three connection that you get from your ISP. Only businesses use these. They're very expensive, but they're also very secure. It's like a VPN, but you can see every other node on the network. For example, a VPN works like this. If I have a VPN and I log into it from home and you have a VPN service like, you know, from the same service provider and you log into your VPN from home, there's no way we could see each other. We can't see each other on the same network. It's virtually private, right? It's private. No one can see each other. I can't see your computer, you can't see mine. It's not like a LAN and it's totally encrypted. Heavily encrypted, in fact. And this is a really good security feature. But some of these encrypted networks want to see each other. So they use something. You can think of MPLS as like a VPN network where everyone's on the same LAN. <laughs> There's no other way to describe it. The MPLS nodes can see each other. They're allowed to. But you have to specifically tell the other node to see this computer. They also use internal IPs for security. Again, they use internal IPs like 192, 168, similar to your home router, your home access point, your home Wi-Fi unit. They'll use the same type of LAN IPs. They don't use external IPs. They use gateways for that. Uh, the router sits in front of the firewall. We always put it in front of the firewall, even though it's counterintuitive because it's layer three and firewalls are layer one but the router is the traffic controller and it allows secure connections. So we allow the secure, secure con connections to only secure connections to hit the router. Then the firewall allows it to pass through to the switching network or this, the switching layer, distribution layer we call it. So the routers and remote access are the same thing. Uh, now you're not gonna use a software VPN on a router, you don't need it. A software VPN runs on your PC and it's encrypted and it uses the same design kind of mechanism, but that's a software VPN. Um, when we're talking uh, layer three VPNs, we're talking hardware VPNs like Microsoft Flex. That's a hardware VPN. You must terminate Microsoft Flex to a hardware device. And there's only certain hardware devices you can terminate that to. So they're very secure. Now, the router is also, also what kind of, I wouldn't say secures your network, but allows only certain traffic into your network. But when your layer one device connects to the router, only routing traffic's allowed through the router. If it's not routed traffic, maybe it's just internet access. Well, that comes in through a different port, not through the router. And the router passes through the network. That's how we set them up. And when we talk uh, layer three VPNs, we're talking about hardware VPNs. It's not something you can just set up on your computer. It, it doesn't work like that. You must have another device, another router at the other end communicating with that router. These are industrial, uh, industrial VPNs or enterprise VPNs. For example, if you have two banks communicating with each other, I guarantee they're communicating through layer three devices, either Cisco or Juniper or, or one of these big industrial manufacturers of layer three equipment. And they're communicating only through hardware. All the processing is done through the hardware. You can't just throw a piece of software on and start terminating to 
to a, a layer three device. No, it doesn't work like that. Um, when, two, when two banks communicate, it's heavily encrypted and it's coming from one layer three device, one router, to another router, and it will only communicate with that other router. Very secure. So that's what we mean by remote access. Uh, now, when that happens, anyone on your network can pretty much access that other router or that other bank. So that's how it works. It can route all your traffic within your LAN to that other bank and vice versa. So we call them site-to-site VPNs, wherein the VPN on your home computer for privacy is like a privacy VPN or software VPN. A site-to-site -site VPN is much different. Um, I'm Johnny O, and this has been The Gig. Any questions or comments, please let me know below. If you want to know anything else, or if I left anything else, or I wasn't clear enough in my explanation of layer three, comments and questions below. Don't forget to like and subscribe.